What do I look like, the illegitimate king of fantasy nerds today, you ask? Whoa, 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 hold up, Scarlet Grim. If we're gonna be talking about who has the crown to be the illegitimate king of fantasy nerds, that is obviously me, because I am like a hundred times more cringeworthy than you. That is an objective fact, undisputable. Shadow Verse. Greetings, I am Shad, and Skalagrim has brought up an old topic. Uh, and look, I love that he has because I love this topic, gives me an excuse to talk about it, uh, which is of course why I'm responding, not because I necessarily disagree, but I do want to play devil's advocate to a number of the points that he raises, but it's a great opportunity for me to talk about backscabbards because I think backscabbards are awesome, and, uh, and he's made a video expressing the reasons why he still thinks they're a bit silly. This is the reality, okay? In some instances, I agree. A backscabbard, as I've, you know, gotten this, like, I've explored it a lot. I've made a, a, a um, a kind of like a test, proof of concept version, which Oz, Oz, you're wearing the, the original proof, proof of concept backscabbard. Have a look. You see this? It's still got it. Turn around, have a look. And in some ways, this is actually more convenient than the upgraded fancy version. But thank you, Oz. Uh, I'll, you'll come back in for demonstrations later. Because then I made this upgraded version uh, from, well, I didn't make it. Blades and Blazers made it. I commissioned him to make it. And we problem solved. And we have a much fancier version that's made for even a bigger sword. This one does have more straps and it's a bit harder to put on. This strap right here is the only one you can't do on your own. And so if you have a friend or anything, but you could leave it undone. And in actual fact, it's a bit loose. You didn't tighten this up. I did. It's not very tight. I tightened it. It need, needs to be tighter. It's your fault. So clearly I could have just left it, but this, is, this strap is supposed to help it stop slipping. Um, and because of that, there are interesting things to talk about and discuss in regards to convenience. Uh, there are, as I mentioned, there are definitely pros and cons, and which way you look at it will determine which one you might actually prefer. But I will stand by that I think there are enough pros to validate people choosing this as an option, sometimes because it is legitimately uh, more, more convenient than other ways. And when I talk about like for certain types of swords, like the big ones specifically, I'll demonstrate. But then there are personal preference options as well. And as a result, there are times when I actually wouldn't pick a backscabbard. So I want to address some of my personal issues with a backscabbard, being completely honest, being one of the biggest fanboys for backscabbards, and then discuss Skalgren's ones, things I agree with, and playing a bit of devil's advocate in some of the, the, the cons, the issues that he might raise up, just to show a balancing of opinions. I love Skalgren. I personally love that he's talking about backscabbards because I love backscabbards. So even if you feel like you're resurrecting an old topic, let's, let's get, it's fun. Further discussion. All right, so one of the areas in which I probably wouldn't pick uh, a backscabbard, if it was more casual, if I was just walking around casually, not adventuring, if I was just wearing a sword for personal self-defense that wasn't this big, I would absolutely usually always go, not only for side carry, I, because if I had a side scabbard that had as many belts and buckles to attach it, not as many, but like usually there's one or two, but if it was attached with belts and buckles on my side, that's as difficult to remove and, and well, sorry, it, it is difficult to remove and put on. Not as difficult as the, the elaborate one I'm wearing, but about as difficult as the previous one. You can have more convenient ways of making a back scabbard or having, putting on a back scabbard. But the inconvenience of you dealing with buckles is a bit of an issue. I personally love this sword frog. There is some historical validity for sword frogs. I've done a whole video uh, talking about where I said that there was no evidence from in the middle period. There's a bit more. They're not exactly like this. This is more of a uh, like an anachronistic or fantasy interpretation. But there is, you know, validity for sword frogs or at least the method of carry slipping a sword scabbard through a loop on a belt like so. That's actually far more valid historically. And so if I was wearing a long sword, not a war sword or a great sword, and I was uh, just for personal self-defense and I wasn't adventuring, I would always pick side carry through a loop or type of sword frog because it's so easy to attach and remove the sword. Because one of the annoying, like, wearing a sword, no matter what, come, bring, brings with it inconveniences. Regardless if it's side, back, long sword, arming sword, war sword or great sword, it's always inconvenient. And sitting down with a sword attached to your side 
is an annoyance. And so when I've gone to like medieval fairs and things and I'm wearing this, whenever I sit down, I was like straight out on the side, I can rest, doesn't get in the way. So the ability to attach and detach the sword is a great thing of convenience that I prefer, which is why I would pick this over a back scabbard, just some of my own personal preferences. In an adventuring scenario, I'm honestly not sure. I think there are still advantages to the back scabbard, as I mentioned, when you need both hands and you don't want this flapping around. I'll probably address this a bit more when Scarlagrim talks about running. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering how this video is so, I'm not sure when it's coming out, but um, uh, I'm a, I'm a patron of Scarlagrim on Patreon, and he posts longer versions of his videos earlier on Patreon, and I've seen it, and I was like, yes, backscabbers, let's go, and I just jumped out to do a video response because I like it, not because I want to rebut or anything, but it's a fun topic, and so if this is coming out particularly soon after Scarlagrim's one, it's because I'm, I'm recording this before he's even released this video. Anyway, he talks a little bit about running, so I'll address that as it comes up, but there, there is a, a big one right there. Now, if... I had the sword buckled to my side. It's almost as equivalently uh, annoying uh, to attach and uh, detach. In regards to sitting, it depends. If this was a long bench, uh, the bottom of the, 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 the back scabbard would probably get in the way. But in regards to stools or seats like that, and I didn't have one on my side, well, you can absolutely sit, rest, lean back. Sitting isn't actually a problem. In actual fact, sitting on a chair like this is easier uh, than sitting on it with uh, a side scabbard because the side scabbard often will hit the ground as you sit and kind of can get in the way. You can just push it to the side and so I'm not saying it's like debilitatingly inconvenient but honestly the back scabbard is easier to sit, lean back, rest on a chair like this um, than people might suppose and so back scabbards don't necessarily get heaps in the way with sitting but if it had um, armrests or was longer well then of course that would be more problematic. One of the bigger issues with back scabbards is something that Matt Easton brought up in his own video and that's cloaks. It's very hard to wear a cloak with a back scabbard. If I did I'd have to put this over the cloak so the whole thing and have it kind of wrap around so it's possible um, and then you could still try and get some rain protection. Other issue is keeping the rain out where my side opening one uh, is open to the rain and in that case I'll put the cloak over the scabbard but then it's harder to draw whereas with a side one well you can put the cloak over and protect it from the rain as well. How detrimental is having a sword exposed to the rain? They obviously had you know had to deal with that historically where people didn't have cloaks to protect them. They had rain guards sometimes which also says that getting water in the, um, the uh, scabbard was an issue and so I think if you actually did general maintenance, oiled the sword, you could survive it even if you were caught in the rain and had an open side scabbard like I'm wearing. So these aren't completely debilitating issues that renders the idea absolutely useless. But as I mentioned in a video, I've done a video where why don't we actually see back scabbards historically? If, if there's enough convenience for them to be justified when we're looking at the logic behind them, why wasn't anybody wearing them just normally? Um, and I go through a number of reasons, but the most basic fundamental reason before making a, a custom, you know, because that's one of the things, to get away with a sword of any size, you do need a different kind of designed scabbard for it. Uh, small ones, you can still get away with drawing it, but I think one of the most simple explanations as to why back scabbards weren't very prominent historically is because when swords first started to be made, okay, and worn, they didn't even bother attaching it. They did kind of what Scargram says in his video, one over Ely's way, they just slipped it through the belt. Most people would have been wearing belts anyway, and then they just wear the sword on the side like this. It does the job, not a problem. And then if they, uh, that develops a fashion around it, having the sword on the side fashionably, and uh, tradition, then custom just kind of evolved. And, and there's also, look, there are convenience to the side. Uh, so that's the main reason, like the easiest way to uh, wear a sword is just put it through your belt. It has a normal scabbard, you don't need to do anything special or anything like that. And uh, that level of basic simple convenience is very hard to overcome and uh, to invest money in a specially made back scabbard or anything seems a little excessive and that really is the ultimate reasons why. So uh, I think the answer isn't too complex, it's simple. It doesn't mean that there aren't unique benefits to a back scabbard, as I mentioned in previous videos, and we'll probably explore here. And I really feel if an adventurer wanted, and they more apply to adventurers than the historical concept, 
as I talked about in my very original backscabbit video, in that context, I think it would be, it's perfectly logical enough, valid enough for an adventurer to say, all right, I actually want it out of the way. I want it on my back and I will invest the money to make, you know, a, a working back scabbard as we see right here uh, for my adventuring. Let's actually start diving into some of Skylagrim's video. Wearing a sword on your back. This has been covered a lot, you know, ever since the early days of the YouTube sword community and whatnot. And uh, I just felt like digging it up again and, and adding a few more cents to it. I'm just watching Skylagrim's video on my phone so I can respond to each point as they come up. Personally, I love bringing up old topics, especially if there's just something a bit new or you have a new perspective to share. Uh, and so bring it, I never hesitate. Love to hear your thoughts, Skull. Everybody has their own opinion and personal bias, of course. So depending on how you approach it, you may come up with a different conclusion. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. A lot of the, um, like determining factors as to what you would go for is actually preference and convenience, what you personally find more convenient. Um, and so there are some objective things that this works better and worse for, as I've already mentioned, but outside of that, what's your preference? There have been a number of videos demonstrating that it does work in a number of different ways. One is simply having a one point attachment. So. Nate from Sword Savvy has, yeah, this is the video Skylagrim's mentioning. It's a brilliant video. It doesn't work for particularly big swords. Uh, I think it works in a pinch perfectly fine, but I have my own purpose. I do prefer a side opening one because it's secured more. I find it um, easy to draw and put away, uh, but this one's perfectly valid. It's always good to keep in mind that just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. I kind of agree, not agree with this. Um, because uh, sometimes you can do something that might not improve upon something else, but you do it just because you enjoy it. And just because you can do something doesn't mean, you, maybe sometimes just because you can do it means if you like it, you should go ahead and do it if, if there's no issue with it. Now, in terms of some of the pros and cons Skylagrim is bringing up in his video, specifically some of the issues is in relation to uh, the, uh, the side drawing over the shoulder method. I am not going to be addressing any criticisms he has with that. I'm going to be applying to if they affect what I feel is the most effective form of back scabbard, which is, yes, the, the side opening one. And look, I know I'm not the first one to invent the side opening one, but I think I'm the first person to do the side panel that leads in the sword to help sheath it. I haven't seen that anywhere else. And to me, this is the most effective way to do it. Uh, it's not to say no, I, if, if people prefer the, the side drawing one that Nate talks about, I think that's brilliant. But I think some of the criticism Skylagrim mentions about drawing from a back scabbard doesn't necessarily fully apply to the version I'm wearing. So that's why if he does bring up an issue, I'm just gonna be applying it to the shabbard design. So is this a good idea? I don't think so, personally. To me, this seems like a solution looking for a problem. I, I kind of agree with this, um, for, especially in a historical context. In a historical context, there's really no issue with this. But in the adventuring one, I think there are some problems I have had. Uh, Skylar's gonna bring up the, the flapping around. Something I'd, I haven't watched the full video. I watched half it before I was like, yes, let's dive in and respond. So I'm not sure if he'll bring this up. But I'll bring it up now because this is a, a problem that actually does exist that I think the back scabbard solves. And that is wearing really big swords. Because when it comes to um, wearing really big swords on the side, there are actually a number of problems that arises. Now I have shown this, these issues, I'll just quickly go over them here. One is that they can hang too low and hit the ground. And then when you're walking around, you can actually see how it grabs the ground like that. Okay, and so it needs to be held up a bit higher and on an angle. And so there's a higher chance that the back is gonna hit people, higher chance that it's gonna hit people on the front. The issue is about by raising it up like this, that makes drawing it actually, you know the initial problem that, you, like, that people had with drawing from the back that they couldn't clear the scabbard? With a really big sword like this, I consider this the war sword range. It's the two year hand, it's the English two year hander. I think it's by Windless. It's like that. And so to draw it, I need to push the scabbard back and stretch, and then I just get it out, okay? And so for quick drawing with a sword this size and bigger, it's actually surprisingly difficult with a sword on the side. And then <laughs> sheathing it is actually fiddly. You gotta stretch, you gotta, uh, 
that's, that's actually inconvenient. It's vastly more convenient drawing such a big sword like this from the back. I can do it one-handed, not a problem. And then sheathing it, well, as I have discovered, it is actually a matter of practice. And so, once you get the practice, I'll just make sure it's locked. Oh no, I locked it in, that's good. Once you get the practice, it's actually easier drawing and putting away a big sword like this than on the side. To me, that is an objective problem that wearing a big sword on the side has that back scabbard or the shabbard does better, just flat, objectively better. I don't see any compelling reason to strap something to your back with one exception. Sure, wearing a sword or any kind of weapon is not the most convenient, comfortable thing in the world. But none of this is really a big problem. You know, like running, for example. Like you can easily hold on to the scabbard. Chad made a point about that in particular. With a sword on the back, you can run with both hands free. Do you absolutely need to have both hands free? Not really. Okay, uh, look, I agree you don't absolutely need to have both hands free, but is it more convenient to run with both hands free? I, th I think that's a fair point that yes, it is. Uh, there's a reason why people at sport don't run with their hands on the hips. They, the, the extra momentum you get to swing your arms to leverage your legs as you go, it's a natural position to be able to have your arms in front of you, sometimes swinging, sometimes not. And I look, it, it's, is it a necessity? No, but is it perhaps a preference that people would like to have both arms free when they run? I agree, and, uh, and the amount that a side sword sometimes can flap around when you run, it prevents you from being able to run full speed unless you're literally holding it. But even when you're holding it with a hand, would that actually affect the speed in which you run? It might, like, if you can get faster speed by having your arms do some work as well, or just having position better on the side, um, and just run, running is, with speed is important, well, that might be a thing. And it's a more preference thing. I guess it's what level of detriment are you willing to uh, uh, put up with? If you're not worried about the inconvenience of the flapping sword and potentially any issues you have with greater speed when you hold it, well then back scabbard wouldn't really issue advantage to you if that doesn't bother you. But if it does, I think people, yeah, could say, no, no, I do want my hands free and I can run. I kind of like it, especially running at speed, you know? I don't think there's a problem. And depending on the suspension, it's not going to, wobble around that much and even if it does who cares well that's the thing i mean some people i think would care but i fully grant scarlet's point some people won't and if it doesn't bother them then yeah what advantage do they get out of the more uh, secure attachment of the back scabbard points there are certain things that you can't do as well with a sort of on your back, for example, wear a backpack at the same time, which is why I made a video a couple of years ago about attaching a sword to the backpack. And I still think that's a pretty reasonable way to carry a longer sword. And you're able to slip out of the backpack, drop it, draw the sword. All right, so I don't expect Skylargram to watch all my videos. Uh, okay. Uh, and so there's no harm or foul here, but I, I've done a video talking about backpacks and that you absolutely can still have a back scabbard and a backpack uh, and one that you don't need to take off the backpack to draw because it's literally the shabbard. You just have the shabbard and it's on the side and you can draw it, not a problem. With the sword hanging on the side, it can be a simple matter of pulling it out just like that and you're good to go. I totally get that when you look at the issue just um, from the get-go that apparently that does look to be a problem. People brought this up, I think, even initially in, when I first introduced the back scabbard. So you won't really be able to wear a backpack. And uh, it's with further experimentation and testing that you can confirm it. And if you haven't done it, no foul that Skylgrim hasn't seen my video and has this opinion, but I do think this opinion is incorrect. For this video, I'm gonna focus on two things in particular that bother me the most. The first one being, you don't really have much awareness of your weapon. Say you're an adventurer, just minding your own business, you know, you're walking around or you're standing somewhere waiting, whatever, and somebody sneaks up on you and wants to steal your sword. This is one of Skylgren's main points, so I actually want to test and explore this to see how much validity there is. So the first part to consider is your awareness of the sword. This really will depend on the type of back scabbard you're wearing, because my one, I'm not sure if you noticed, okay, the sword is resting much higher than um, Skylgrim's one is, and is angled 
closer to my back to the point that for me to see, to actually see the hilt of my sword, I need to turn my face this much. I can see the cross garden sword right there. And that's me still looking forward. If I actually look my eyes, I can, look, I can see the, the back scabbard right there. And so that's the first thing about awareness. It doesn't take too much. And so to test this, this is where I, I have, oh, this is where you're in here. I'm gonna get earmuffs so I won't be able to hear your approach. And you're gonna try and take this out of my scabbard, take, like steal it, and you're not gonna tell me when. Okay. You can pick whenever, and I'm going to try and uh, grab and just stop it. Um, and so uh, we, we will test it. I think a loss is uh, if you cannot steal it and clear it without me stopping or, or he, I'm grabbing you or because if you, even if I can grab you because I felt enough of contact because Scargram's example is that someone can run in grab the sword and run off before you could stop them at all okay. and so if there is even if you're able to draw it somewhat and I can stop you enough okay. if, there, if I have enough situational awareness of the back scabbard then I don't think his point is as clean cut as Scargram is mentioning. You are looking, you're not allowed to look, you have to look straight. No, 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 part of it is situational awareness. Well, but like, I did not have, I, I turned my head that much and I can see it. Okay. 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 I, okay. but believe me, I did not hear it at all. <laughs> okay. But we're going to do both. I'm going to, I'm going to do it where I'm just like, you know, this, but we'll, we'll try and steal man and I'll be looking completely away. And if I'm looking completely away, I reckon you'll get it then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you might have a point. Uh, you might have a point. You might have a point. I, I, because I, you were, no, you're I pretty quick then. You're pretty quick. It, were you approaching really softly and like? I stood there for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Just like doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm a rogue. Is it fair for me? Uh, well, we're assuming if someone is sneaky, I wouldn't be able to hear him at all. Fine. Try without. Without? That'll be a challenge. And so, if I can hear his approach and just turn, we'll see how viable that is. I heard you. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and I would turn, I'll be like, huh, what's that? <laughs> I heard you. No, you didn't. I made no noise. <laughs> I heard something. Maybe it was the wind in the tree because I heard something behind me. But you were close and I turned when you were getting a prey. Like, I didn't turn too I early. Too. Silently, like literally. I, I heard that though. You, you don't hear it. There is the slight compression the of the grass. Hold it, get, kneel down. Kneel down. Right, here we go. Yeah, the creak crumpling of the grass. I could hear. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I can't, I don't know. When I say I got good hearing, there are like high pitched noises that I can hear that my wife doesn't hear. I'm like, can you hear that? It's like, no. And it bugs the heck out of me and I go find and there's like an electrical buzz somewhere. And so my hearing range actually goes higher than my wife's. I had wife's. that too. My, whenever my ex-girlfriend was talking, there was this high pitched annoying noise. <laughs> but, it. okay, so. Let's compare, I, I think Scargram might have a point, just by the resting of the arm position, mm. you could, uh, it would be very hard for someone to reach in front, I mm. think, okay? So, if this is an issue, which it very well might be, and we're finding it kind of is, there is a solution though. Is like, my question is, is this a problem great enough to make people never want to bother wearing it? If it's a problem enough to Scargram and he doesn't like it, personal preference, absolutely, he doesn't think. But if I like a lot of the other benefits, that makes me feel like if this is an issue, I'm willing to explore a fix. And there is a fix. Mm -hmm. I have like little touch button things. I'll just put a loop around, over the top right here. And so when I want to draw it, I, you actually need to unclip something and then draw it. Mm -hmm. And that would solve the problem completely. Because even a thief would have to try and unlatch it and you could do it so a yank wouldn't release it. And I think that would solve the problem. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, you think? Yeah. Do you, do you want me to try and steal this off you? Okay. Well, I jump. You, you make loud steps. So, so hey, it's the grass though. You can hear the grass. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 
damn it. <laughs> Are you very, very sneaky? <laughs> feels good, doesn't it? It feels good. <laughs> Okay, so honestly, point to Scarlagrim in this regard. I will concede that having it on the back is easier for someone to steal. I think that's just fair, let's be honest. Uh, I think there is a fix for it though. If you're, if you're worried about it, like I said, little leather loop over there like that, that you just unclip and then draw and you're all good. Also with a scabbard on your hip like this, you were able to adjust it. So you can adjust the back scabbard a little bit. Granted, not as much, especially if it's like a side scabbard just loops through the belt, you have more options, but you can adjust the angle, you can adjust the thing. I can so depending on what you're sitting on, you know, you can, th 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 there's, you know, room. This also allows you, by the way, to sit down, no problem. There is one type of sitting that I do want to quickly test out, and that's actually just sitting on the ground, okay? Because this is hanging out, I think, It'll be fine, it'll just curve around. So if I was like, like this, that's not bad. Like I said, there's enough room to move that sitting is an issue. In actual fact, I think this is just as convenient, like with a long sword, because the anchor point is the hip, it has to really curve and get out of the way. And so sitting on the ground is actually a bit of an issue with a long sword, maybe even more of an issue than this back scabbard here. And remember, this is, this is a war sword. This is a big sword, okay? Ah oh, man, back scabbards just look cool. Look how cool it looks. Fashion is an element. I admit, swords look cool on the side as well. It conveys a different aesthetic. A side feels more regal and presented and almost noble. Back seems more utilitarian. Both arms. Yeah, both arms free and uh, warrior-ish almost. If this bothers you, you know, if this gets in the way or whatever, you can adjust it so that it points more down and you can still walk around. You know, it's, it might get a little bit in the way of the leg, but there are definitely options to adjust it. You can't really shift this around too much. I mean, basically you can just decide if you want to have it lower or higher and that's about it. Otherwise you can't really adjust it too much. Well, it depends by what he means with shifting around. I, again, I can do it like that, do it like that. I can tighten the side strap here to hold it in more vertical or loosen. And so it allows for more on the angle. And so when I want to sit, it goes on the angle a bit, I can sit. And so moving and bending around, um, it's like, like this is where the back scabbard really, I feel, shines because of how securely it's attached. And uh, you know, running and everything, like this is really secure. So lack of awareness and control over the sword is my one big issue. And that's valid enough. I think that's definitely valid enough issue with it to make someone say, nah, I just won't prefer back scabbard. So yeah, I, I, I absolutely, I mentioned before, if you like the other advantages it gives, then there are ways to overcome that issue. Again, just have a, have a little strap locking it in. The other has to do with vulnerability. If you reach up like this to draw your sword, what are you doing? You're exposing your armpit, which is one of the vulnerable spots when wearing armor. The next point Scarlagrim brings up, I'm not entirely convinced about, which is the possible, um, uh, a vulnerability that you have when drawing from a back scabbard. First point you made is uh, opening up the armpit for a potential attack because you have to raise your arm to grab it. But when you draw a sword, you are like, let's try and see, can I keep mostly, I don't know, to get the sword out, I'm having to raise it somewhat, potentially exposing that. First, it's not a worry in all instances. Male gambeson could be protection enough when you're not wearing armor on the arms, um, you're as exposed under the arm as you're on top. So like drawing like this doesn't really mean much in that regard. But if you're really worried about exposing the underarm when you're wearing plate armor, and this is where when you're drawing it with a back scabbard or side one, you just turn away and draw it so you don't expose it. Would that affect um, the speed and how fast you can attack? It depends, I mean, so if you didn't want to expose it and just want to draw on the side, you just go like that. That's a little bit slower. And uh, any attack while you're drawing, you're going to be presenting the drawing arm anyway, and you're potentially exposed there to do a, a direct attack. And when drawing a sword from the back, the issue isn't as uh, exaggerated when you have to pull the sword down and draw it from the side, uh, because uh, if you're using a shabbard, you, one, you don't always need to like expose your arm to draw it. And even normally, when you're like this, your arm isn't fully exposed. And if you really just were worried about it, you just turn away, draw it, and then come up with an attack. 
It's actually kind of a fast draw method a bit then. In terms of fast drawing to attack, well, I think the fastest one is when, yeah, you do face your opponent and you just go down or something like that, but you can go faster. But if you want to protect that arm, maybe if you have like a shield or something here, you can draw it, go down, and then come up for, you know, down where you cut, where you just like, Flaw! stab and thing. So there are ways to quick draw it, do an attack and protect the vulnerable side that Skalagrim is mentioning or bringing up. Also generally as an adventurer who is being ambushed and has to suddenly defend, this just seems like a more vulnerable position because for one, this is an extra mo movement that you gotta do in case of this suspension here, where you, you gotta pull it down and then you gotta pull the sword and now you're leading with the arm like that, and this is not fantastic to draw an attack from. For that drawing method, maybe. I don't think for the Shabbat, okay? This, I don't think is a very vulnerable position, especially that you can attack that way when you draw it, or you can attack that way when you draw it, um, and you can draw it really quickly. So when you're holding onto it, it's just, and it's out. It, that's not hard at all. That's one of the big advantages of the Shabbat, is how quickly you can draw it, uh, right, especially for something this size. I can draw this size swords, sword much quicker out of the shabbard than I can if it was on the side sheath because I gotta stretch and get it out. There are more situations I can imagine where you might not be able to draw from your back uh, as opposed to from the side. This one here yeah, is very much determined by situation and circumstance. I actually feel there, yeah, there would be situations which it would be harder to draw from back scabbard versus a side, but I also think there are situations which it would be harder to draw from a side versus a back scabbard. And so I don't think this is a major uh, advantage to one or the other. Uh, it's very situational. This is actually a good thing to bring up something that Matt mentioned in his um, uh, discussion on back scabbard's video, Matt Easton, Scholar Gardatoria. And I think this is a bit of a pro to side scabbard wear, is that from the drawing position, it's very easy to adopt a guard position from drawing it, okay? And there's, uh, he mentions that there are uh, uh, extensors in historical martial arts that actually um, flow on very neatly from after drawing it to positions just like so. I do wonder though, because the starting position where you're grabbing it like that, there is a little bit, it's not one-to-one, -one, cause I'm talking about uh, wrath stance, okay? So that there is some similarity to the wrath guard here, but obviously the wrath guard is two-handed. But if I just lift it out a little, and right, I'm, I'm in a guard position, aren't I? That's actually pretty quick. Is it just as quick as drawing a sword from the side into a guard position? Maybe. Let me quickly test this. So you're standing around and you just wanna quickly go, you're in, you're in a guard position straight away. Ah. I'll try it again, because it's actually a big advantage to the Shabbat, I feel, is that you don't need to draw it the full length of the sheath for it to come out. They'll need to draw it that little section, and then it's already released. And so if I do it from this position so you can see, so I'll try and show adopting something like Wrath from this position here. You're standing normally, and someone's there, and you're just right there. That's pretty quick, and it doesn't need to go the full length of the sheath to get out. And so this position here, it's a valid guard position, so I actually don't think that, after testing it, I actually don't think there is a um, unbalanced advantage to uh, a, wearing a side scabbard from drawing and then adopting a guard position ready for combat in terms of speed. I think it's pretty equivalent. If not, there might be a slight speed advantage to the shabbard. If you're dealing with a low ceiling, you know, some, some obstacles or you're in, in dense forest or who knows what where you may not have as much clearance overhead. So low ceiling and dense forest, being completely honest, okay, I do admit I've knocked the head like of um, the sword when it's sticking up and further on the side. Uh, and when I'm not aware of it, going through doors, you can clank it. But there, the fix is just easy, you just flip like that. Um, and when you just make sure you angle it out of the way, that's not a problem, because. but this is the thing. With a side scabbard, you're often repositioning it so it doesn't hit what you need. And so I think in terms of uh, maneuvering or manipulating the sword so it doesn't knock into things, it's again, equivalent. And again, you don't need to draw it the full length of the sheath to release it. In actual fact, you might have more difficult drawing a long sword because you've got to get all the way out in a place with, you know, not a lot of room. Contrast this with the uh, shabbard, because I don't need to draw the full length, all I need to do is this, around, and I'm good to go, okay? So I don't need a lot of room to actually pull this out. I'll show you this from the front. If I'm in a cave or anything like that, crouching down, and it's out, and I'm good to go, 
okay? So that is actually a very tight kind of drawing that you could do in a very tight confines. And it's the same with if I needed to put it away and I have closed confines, just bring it around, around the back, make sure, hang on, I've got to move the, yeah, around the back and then in and you're good. And uh, this, by the way, I actually quite like this, simply tugging it through the belt. This is what they did in Japan as well. You know, simply sticking a katana scabbard through a sash because then you're able to adjust it any way you want. And genuinely, I think that is the biggest convenient uh, argument for wearing sword on the side is that you don't need a special sheath or anything so through the belt. And uh, like I said, without specially made sheaths, everyone's gonna just do that. It's gonna be on the side as the default. I agree completely. Plus it means you can simply slide it out of the belt in one movement and carry it like this if you have to. If for some reason it's more convenient, like if you have to really control where it is, like if you're really dealing with tight spaces or for whatever other reason, it's just more advantageous to hold it like this. Perhaps you anticipate trouble so this way you could just draw and either toss the scabbard or even use it as a secondary weapon. Using the scabbard as a secondary weapon, that's a cool, you know, counterpoint. Can't do that with the shabbard, point to Skalagrim. Uh, but in regards to uh, holding it in your hands because uh, you're anticipating danger, I think if uh, you're anticipating danger to the point where you felt it warranted actually holding the sword at the ready like this, you'd probably just draw the sword straight away and just hold the bare, bare sword in your hands ready to go. Those are all things you can't do here, unless you find some sort of quick detachment method that allows you to just take the scabbard off. So this scabbard has a detachment method. It isn't quick though, but for convenience, like if I'm in an inn or everything like that and I do need it off, well, because it is fiddly to put it back on, I'll save that to the end and just take it off. I've seen demonstrations done where the scabbard is basically flung off, like the moment you pull it. I've seen that one too. That one's, I like it, I like it. Um, how practical, I don't know, but I, it's, it's cool. There's something that just feels more solid, more martially viable about drawing like this. So this one definitely is subjective taste. So if Skalagrim likes the martial feeling of drawing it like that, absolutely valid. Uh, that's his taste. He can have the preference. But I also feel he's making some assumptions because he hasn't experienced a, a, a properly made back scabbard with the demonstration we just showed how easy it is to draw, especially a big sword, from the back like this and how quickly you can adopt a martial position from drawing it. That's super fast. That is, that I feel is also very martially viable and ready to go. And I think it's pretty clear that Skalagrim is unaware of it because he hasn't tried it out. He doesn't have one and he hasn't seen all the different ways and utilities and advantages possibly. The way, because there is specific ways that a shabbard works and because again, you don't need to draw it the full length of the sheath, that gives it an advantage to drawing it out quickly. And look, even if he tried it out, he could still just prefer on the side because he likes the guard positions, you can adopt easier from that method and other things. But having tested it out, the uh, shabbard with a big sword, wearing it, and how quickly you can do it, that there's a lot of martial validity in terms of drawing a sword and adopting a combat stance uh, with the shabbat, there's still a lot of validity to it. If you just look at the overall profile, which do you think looks more vulnerable? This or this? Again, it kind of depends because if I'm ready to adopt um, uh, wrath stance from here, this isn't a vulnerable stance, I don't believe. So if I'm like this, which is I think, uh, you know, a good guard position, I'm ready to go, and you're just there, from there to there, that's fast, all right? And lastly, just for fun, the topic of coolness. I'm so glad he brought it up. Because yes, I brought it up already. I'm not sure, but I was talking with Oz. It's just, it looks cool. I disagree with that too, actually. I, I don't really see the big appeal here. Yeah, perfectly fine. Personal preference, I think this is. Like, um, in terms of what you find cool, that's a very individualistic thing. And he doesn't think it's cool? Of course, like, because one of the things that will influence is what you think looks better. And as I mentioned, there are times I think side looks better, but I do love the look of the back scabbard. And so fashion 
shouldn't be disregarded as something to bring up in regards to the reasons why people did things. And if people liked the look, even if there was some impracticality to it, they would go out of their way just to achieve the fashion. Look at their armoured cod piece, okay? Very impractical, preventing you from probably being able to ride a horse efficiently in the armour, but they did it for fashion. Now, obviously, coolness, you know, we can't exactly debate that any more than you can debate whose favourite colour is correct. It's green, by the way. No, it's red, Scarlet Grim. I'll not hear anything else. You're objectively wrong. But red goes great with green. It's a great combination. You know the best combinations for the colour red? Green and blue. Combine red with blue or red with green. And it's like, and you know, uh, this used to be Scargram sword. I bought it off of him and it's green. I think he got it green for a reason, but it compliments. I got it, I got it, oh. <laughs> no earmuffs and I got it. You did. We've already, we've already said, there's a, we've admitted that Oz. We've, oh, okay, I'll put it back in then. But if I had an attachment, a latch. Yeah, yeah, a bit of rope. Yeah, and you wouldn't be able to do it, would you? Coming from there to there. Yeah. Or even just an over, over thing latch that you need to unhook. Yeah. Yes, green, complimenting the, uh, it's, not, it's like it's a wine red of the Brigantine. Works very well. If you stand there, you're negotiating with somebody, maybe trying to convince them that it may not be the best idea to attack you. There's just something about this, about this kind of gesture, you know? Like... All right, damn it, that is a good point. Just the, the warding off thing about, I've got a very big pummel that I am caressing. I don't mind rubbing this knob to ward you off. And you're right, it, it is very, you can't just casually like, what, I'm just doing this because I'm resting my, no, I'm not, you're not. You're not. Like, uh, so yes, but this, you're, it's a good point. I was like, you can do the old, Oh, I'm just stretching. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, 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 but no, like in terms of just casual, uh, like, you know, presenting something forward and just like, but I don't know. I, all right. Do you need to do it? Or is it a question? Because one of the reasons why I think people like the back scabbard is that you can't miss it. It's always presented. It's right there. It's, in, it's near the face. You look at the face, you see the sword. You look at the face, you don't see a side sword. And so this is like a constant reminder of, yes, I'm armed. And, and look, you might say that's irrelevant because when you're at a distance, you can't miss it. But sometimes you can miss a sword at the side. People, mostly, very often, look at people's faces when they talk. And what do you see when you look at my face? So, in terms of intimidation, I think the back scabbard has a little bit of validity there. So seriously, you're talking to someone and you wanted to intimidate me just like, like that. You are presenting the sword, you know? So Skargram is like talking about um, uh, uh, subtle body language gestures toward people like, I'm armoured. Can I do that without being too obvious about like, <laughs> what about like, Ah, uh, that's too obvious too. Head scratch. Head scratch, just like, maybe, maybe a bit, a bit of a, like that. That's true because you do raise your hands, like I adjust my glasses, just like, you know, maybe. I but the other thing is, do you need, maybe sometimes to be intimidating, you don't even need a, like, so if I'm like this and I wanted to do some type of intimidating thing, I could, I could you know, on the thing, but also like, I don't even need to indicate, it's right there. I just need to like, you know what I'm wearing. It's not here, like, you can't miss it when it's like that. Hey, no, I get, they, they, look, this is all preference. So, so what do you think? Yeah, let, let us know in the comments. Um, uh, and I could be wrong, okay? You know, this sort of position. Okay, so Sc Skalgrim isn't even touching the sword. He's just angling it so they notice it. Again, you could do that with the sword, I mean, but you don't, do you even need to? It's right there, it's just, oh, I, a head nod. I got. Look what's look what's in my head. It just looks like somebody's confident. Uh, this one, you're looking confident with a weapon. Yes, you can do that with a sword. Just like, what are you looking at? You're looking at my big sword. You can assume a position from which you can very quickly and easily draw. Like you can have your your hands here, for example. Like this is it's not an act of aggression. You don't have it on the sword but it's pretty freaking close to it. Yeah, okay, so distance of hands to the resting position of the sword. Granted, your hands are closer to the sword here. You need to raise it to there. But with the shabbard, you don't need to draw the sword out further to get it free, whereas with a regular sheath, you need to draw it the full length. And I think that balances out. The speed you're saving to uh, reach to your sword here versus reaching all the way up there is then 
you, you get that speed back for the fact it's just a quick up that. You, that's that much, that motion, and it's out versus usually like that. I'm trying to compare like for like. So big sword versus big sword, long sword, long sword. Whatever sword you pick, usually if you do a, a uh, it's until you get particularly small. For a shabbard, you don't need to draw it out up nearly as much to release it from the sheath. Or you can just casually hook your belt, you know, effectively bringing your sword hand a lot closer that way. This is pretty quick. I think we've done a lot of tests though. You can draw it really quickly and even if you just casual around and you can be pretending you're like, like that, that's pretty quick. Out of interest, I'm comparing both of our speed drawing methods, reducing the frame rate to 30%. And in slow motion, we can see they're actually very comparable. Skalagrim is the slightest bit faster, but also bear in mind, I'm drawing a sword that looks to be twice the length of the sword that Skalagrim is drawing. If Skalagrim was drawing, say, a long sword or anything longer than that, I actually think the speed drawing for the Shabbat would win. Anyway, those are my rationalizations, because there's a chance there. the main reason I don't like the back draws, because it just seems to try hard. Try hard? How could he say something so controversial yet so true? Leave us try hards alone. We just like backscabbed Skalagrim. That one hurt. That went right to the heart. It just seems the kind of thing that you would do just to be different, you know, just to be special, to not do everything that everybody else does. Maybe now, but back not too long ago, backscabbards were the way to wear swords in fantasy but they never had the right type of one. And, yeah, and then people are like, oh, it's dumb, you wouldn't be able to draw, but then we've gone through the whole thing where backscabbers have gone out of favor. So now it's, you know, you, you're a different to where he goes like, but back in the day, no, no, it was, it was the go-to fantasy wearable thing. So it's not necessarily to be different. Oh, look, I, I genuinely, I, I do like the look. I personally think it's cool, but I do like even, because look, I've pointed out issues with it. So I'm not letting my bias get in the way where I can't, you know, like express or point out limitations with it, but there are limitations with the side drawing, it's a balance, and the adventure you get out of it, I personally like, I like how secure it is. I like that both my arms are free. I like I can run. The big one is that I, I can wear a huge sword like this really conveniently. <laughs> That's like the winning thing for the Shabbat in my mind because I like big swords and it's far more convenient and comfortable wearing a big sword on your back than on your side. There's a reason why people didn't wear big swords on their side stereotypically because they were too awkward, they were too uncomfortable. What I still do with a long sword? A circumstance. If I, uh, like I said, I've already acknowledged self-defense every day, it would be on my side. Adventuring where I needed to climb potentially crawl um, or wade through stuff and or run, even with a long sword, I think I'd go with the backscabbard. So yeah, preference, but those are the reasons why I prefer it. It's not, not to be different, but there are legitimate benefits. I'm biased like that. Everybody has their bias. I agree, and uh, you get to see my bias and the reasons that I, I try to put away it in some cases, but I'm sure my bias influenced me. Skalagrim is in his own way. We're just sharing our thoughts as to what we like, the reasons why, and you guys can make up your own mind because, like I said, it's not wrong in a lot. It's all personal preference, and if he prefers it, yeah, not a problem. Whoa, well, I almost forgot to mention the exception that I hinted at earlier, where I do think it makes sense to wear a sword on your back. He's gonna do it. I know he's gonna, he's gonna say big swords. I know he's gonna say big swords. Just wait, wait. And that is in case of particularly large swords. Yes, Skalagrim! I knew you could do it! Yeah, that, cause you, that's right. That's objectively true. Big swords are much easier to carry on your back. So in this case, if you have a specialized back scabbard that's partially open on the side so that you can draw it a little bit and then rotate it out, this would work quite nicely. You are right, sir, and indeed it does. I, I do really want to promote the war sword category because this length sword is in the no man's land between long sword and great sword, and so it's better to just have its own category uh, because I think great swords are so stereotypically like they're big, they're big suckers, they're going up to you know head height, right? When it comes to around this range from the ground, which is what this sword is, I, I have three of them, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, see here, uh, from this range and maybe from the armpit around that range, 
War sword, I feel, is a very appropriate classification because this is actually one of my favorite length of swords for adventuring. Not oversized, you can still do a lot of long sword techniques, but they have a lot of, you know, power behind them, extra reach. It's, I, I, I love this size sword. And uh, so, yeah, I, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But yes, so we've tested it. You're absolutely right. Super convenient. A shabbard works brilliantly for the big ones. In a purely historical setting, this is still a solution looking for a problem because when would you carry a large sword like this when you're going to war? In which case, transportation is not that big of an issue. So, great point that Skylagram is bringing, and this is why I feel the shabbard for these size swords fits for a fantasy, because that's when you would be traveling and carrying a sword this size, potentially. Uh, you wouldn't carry a sword this size for self-defense. I wouldn't. I, I get, it's too big, and uh, I would go for a long sword. More convenient, lighter, yeah, I, um, uh, better for dueling. The less circumstances in which you would justify something this big, but for adventuring, where you want uh, more possibility for one hit, one kill to do some really big chops, fend off a wider range, I would go for something bigger like this size, absolutely. And, because, and then you're traveling with this size sword, not just for war, and that's when the backstab it. And so it goes back to kind of the original um, discussion I was having in the very beginning. In a fantasy setting in particular, that's when the backstab I feel holds far more logical validity than what we saw in history. Because it's right, when in history, if you carried big swords, yeah, you don't usually need a system where it's easy to grab, pull it out, and you're good to go because you go going to war, you usually know when you're fighting it, except for like, you know, being attacked unawares, but that's not as often, but there are skirmishes. Still, um, you know when the battle's taking place, the armies form up, and you just grab the sword off of the, uh, the carts and uh, the supply wagons or whatever, carrying it. And, uh, you know, if you needed to carry it for any length of time, well, usually just on the shoulder work for whatever short distances, but over long distances, that's when, yeah, Scabbard. The only situation in everyday life in history that I'm aware of where somebody would carry a great sword would be if you're a bodyguard, which is shown in historical manuscripts, show you how to carry it, which is once again not strapped to your back, but just just carrying it in some way. It is the most obvious solution, just carrying it. And perhaps, you know, it's too expensive to do something like this. But I do think if someone presented one, like, like literally a shabbard, to say a bodyguard that needed a much longer sword and showed the advantages and disadvantages, I'd be like a medieval salesman, it can do this, it can do that, it's great, you'd love it. I reckon I could convince him. A, bo a medieval bodyguard is like, you know, all right, I'm doing it. And then he gets to strut around with it on his back, it's ready to quick to go. Uh, and it's not to say you always keep it, even with a, a, like a back like, um, scabbard, a uh, shabbard, if you know imminent danger is about to happen, I would just draw it and have it in my hands, ready to go. That's the quickest rat ready method. But whenever you're walking over a decently long distance and you want a really big sword out of the way, back scabbard, convenient. I think, I think even bodyguards would be like, yeah. Yeah, I see, the, I see the advantages. However, in a fantasy scenario, okay. In that case, having it on your back and accepting the fact that you won't be able to carry a backpack, you might just have a, another shoulder bag slung across the other side. That makes sense. You're a good man, Skylagrim. And yes, he's, he's acknowledging what I feel is a very big virtue of it, the fantasy setting when you're carrying it. I still think he um, uh, hasn't realized how effective you can attach a shabbard to a backpack and still, you know, adventure with a backpack. Check out my video on backpacking with adventuring and all you know, adventuring with a backpack. It's there, it's there. Check that out because uh, I do talk about it. And there we go. Skylagrim is a great sport. Love him heaps, love his content. Love that we have to have further discussions on one of my favorite topics, the back scabbard. Thank you for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed and of course, I hope to see you again. And usually I'd say until next time, farewell. But of course, I'm going to be ending off this video in the same way Skylagrim did with a creature. Aha! It's not even as fast as I can do though. I can do faster than that. Let's, let's, let's. We're going to, oh, and there are some outtakes as well. But yes, we can end off this with a quick draw, just like he did right there. There we go. So, anyway, we can do, you can do quick draw with these as well. And, um, oh, well, I wanted to show you the, how long it takes to take, detach the scabbard um, from the baldric with this system here. And so I'll just... Told us to remind you that. Yeah, but now I remembered, you don't need to tell me. If I wanted to take this off first, there is 
that buckle there and then uh, there is this one here now, undo that there like so and uh, is this no that one's already detached oh i fully detached it have I? Yes, I think I have. And so then the only last one should actually be the tack here, which I was wrong. There is one left. It's this one here. There we go. We got it off. So it can be detached. It's not the easiest thing. And it, um, and that's the only one they have trouble putting it on with. But uh, yes, you absolutely can detach the whole thing. And then if you're in, you know, I don't know, sitting down with your, at an, at an inn, okay? Or is it a tavern? Because yeah, they're not always the same thing. I have a video on it. Chuck this next to you while you're sitting down drinking and it's there. It's good to go when you need it. Greetings, I'm Oz and today I want to talk to you about a bit of a disagreement I've had with Shad. You see, he's always maintained that in any engagement, it's best to keep the enemy between you and the sword. Or is it the other way? No, it's best to keep the sword between you and the enemy. And so, in regards to things like scabbards and back scabbards, like you keep a sword on your side, well, the enemy's not coming from your side unless he's flanking. And he's not going to come from your back unless he's sneaking up on you, which is a coward strategy. So what I propose is this. No side scabbard or back scabbard. We should instead have the front scabbard. The front scabbard at all times keeps your weapon between you and your enemy. And you can make sure perfectly when you draw it that it goes back in every single time. No fuss, no muss. That's literally the first time I've ever done it and it went straight back in. So, like and subscribe for more autistic content.